Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. We're transforming this mess into a beautiful kitchen all in this week's show. Stay with us. Welcome to Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford. Get ready for a half hour full of projects, tips and ideas to help you improve your home. Welcome to the show this week. Hey, you can see we've got quite a mess here. This is a result of a couple days of tear out of what was a very old, out of date, very small kitchen. Now, it doesn't look small now because we removed a wall here that was between the kitchen and a small little bedroom. We also removed a wall here between a bedroom and a den that was seldom used by the homeowners. Now, we'll be able to utilize the entire area for our new kitchen layout. Now, that new kitchen layout will include utilizing the old fireplace in, a, in an eating area, then establishing two new island cabinets, one here, one over here, and plenty of cabinets to finish out this well-thought-out kitchen. Now, there's a lot of ideas in this kitchen design you may be able to use around your home, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. Now at this point, we're fairly clean and most of the tear out is complete, so we can take care of some of the tasks like straightening the old walls. It's not uncommon for a stud that may be 30 or 40 years old to warp a little bit, and when we put up our new drywall, we don't want any kind of deflection in the wall at all. So what we've done, we have a couple two by twos, one on each end, a piece of nylon string, and we're able to go along the face of each of the studs to check to see if they may be in or out a little bit. This one's about a quarter inch out, so we'll have a little bit of work to do to get that back straight. Now, it's not uncommon to have to take a strip of wood and rip down from, say, three-eighths of an inch down to over an inch. We had to do that in several areas of this project already so that we have a wall that's not only straight but also nice and plumb. Now, we try to remove all of the walls in an extensive renovation like this for several reasons. One, it allows us to straighten the walls. Another, it gives full access for the electrician and plumber to get in, take care of all of their work. You can see here, plumber has a little bit of work to try to upgrade this old plumbing for our new kitchen sink. And our electrician has a lot of work because we'll have a number of switches, outlets being added to this area. Also, a number of code issues have to be dealt with in order to upgrade a number of the electrical circuits and a lot of ceiling lights that'll go in not only the kitchen but right on in to the eating area. Now, at this point, you can also see kind of the footprint of the old kitchen. Uh, the vinyl floors, you can see where the wall came out right in here, and the cabinets that started here and wrapped right on around. So it was a fairly small area. Now all of this will have to be removed so that we can even the floor up for the new floor covering that will go in at the latter part of the job. Now this wall came out very easily because it was a non-load bearing wall. We have a little bit of, of joist work to do in here to complete that. But this one, this wall was a little harder because we had to install a laminated veneer lumber beam that spans across this area. And we did it in a flush manner so that when the new drywall goes up, you'll never know an old wall was ever here. Now we have just a little bit more carpentry work with the ceiling joist and a few other things, then we can turn our plumber and our electricians loose. The missing ceiling joist is quickly replaced and just in time for the electricians to take over the room. There are tons of switches and outlets to install, so our electricians consult the drawings carefully before locating the boxes. Code dictates that some devices like refrigerators and microwaves have to have dedicated circuits, so the drawings are very important as the guys begin pulling the hundreds of feet of wire that make up each circuit. When the electricians are done, the plumber gets the new drain and water lines in place. The heating and air conditioning ductwork also goes in while the walls and ceilings are open. Next, our guys scrape and pry up all the old layers of flooring so that the subfloor is smooth and even. When the inspections are passed, insulation goes in all the wall cavities before the walls are closed up. We installed insulation in not only the exterior walls, but also all of the interior walls so that we're trying to reduce the amount of noise that transfers from the kitchen 
into the adjacent areas of the home. And if this kitchen is as busy as I think it will be, that probably was a good investment. Now, insulation is primarily used to make an area of the home more energy efficient. And one thing we've done in this room that'll help that out as well, the new vinyl sliding doors and vinyl windows that we've installed. Now, not only are these windows and doors double pane, but also they're filled with argon gas and have a low E coating, which can really make them very energy efficient. And a lot of people are finding out on how energy efficient solid vinyl windows can be. Now, we're really moving along on this project, and you'll be able to see it complete in this week's show. And our next step, trim work. It's time to pick up a few tricks of the trade from Danny and home repair expert Joe Truini in this week's Simple Solution. Joe, what are you doing now? I know it looks like I'm making a really bad lamp, but it's actually a painting technique for these clay pots. Hmm. I was painting these for the holidays, and I couldn't find a quick and easy way and a neat way to paint them. I had lots of pots to paint. Okay. So I thought there had to be a quicker way than just doing it by hand. Hmm. And I came up with this idea, which works really great. I have a drill that I chucked in a carriage bolt. Then I cut a round wooden disc and attach it to the top of the bolt. Now, this particular drill has a speed adjustment knob on the trigger, which allows me to control the speed because you don't want it running too fast. Right. Then I took a couple pieces of bubble wrap and put it inside the pot so we get a nice tight fit on the wooden disc. So that's where all that bubble wrap ends yep. up. <laughs> you see, just tap it on lightly, turn on the drill. And there it goes. It pretty much stays on by itself. But I like to keep my finger on the top just in case it comes flying off. Mm -hmm. And this is just an exterior grade flat paint. You see how quickly this goes on. You hold it brush against there. And if you use, if you grab the right amount of paint with your brush, it doesn't even come flying off. So you don't, you're not going to get it all over yourself. And I couldn't find any quicker, neater way to paint these pots. And this will work for any round, like a, a wooden bowl. If you had a round wooden bowl that you wanted to varnish. And if you don't get it all, I mean, I don't even mind that. It gives it kind of a distressed look. Well, I can see it works well, but this is the strangest one yet. Welcome back to the show. While the guys are continuing the work on our kitchen renovation project, we thought it'd be a good idea to check in with our homeowner, Barbara Huff. Well, Barbara, I see that you've um, kind of gotten you a little temporary kitchen set up here in the old wet bar area. That's right. Got a coffee pot and a toaster oven the kitchen sinks in the guest bathroom, the refrigerators in the foyer, and the microwave stand So space. it's kind of spread out a little bit, but keeping those uh, meals flowing a little bit. It is. <laughs> well, great. Well, now, I know you've had to make a lot of decisions, and, and you and Jerry have been really planning on this kitchen renovation for uh, quite a long time, I understand. Yes. We've known the kind of kitchen we wanted for 35 years, <laughs> but we've known particularly what we wanted here, Danny, because we've lived in this home for 15 years. And from the day we bought it, we knew what we wanted that kitchen to eventually be. Well, what are some of the things that you're really looking forward to? Because at this point, um, you can kind of get an idea of the size area you're going to have to work with. And I know that you've worked you know, thoroughly through the plans and so forth. But what are some of the things you're really looking forward to? The storage. That's what I'm doing right now, is literally planning ahead. I feel like I know the kitchen already. And so I'm literally determining what's going to go in each cupboard. I'm going to love a kitchen window that I can actually see out. I'm a very short person, and for 15 years, I never saw out my kitchen window. We took down this wall and opened this up so it's got lots of windows, lots of light. We'll have the two separate islands. We're excited about this. This area will have our music. We've got the fireplace. We just feel like for the amount of time that we spend in the kitchen, it couldn't be any better than than what this is. Well, it sounds like you've certainly thought it through very well, and, and I know the situation with both you and your husband using the kitchen many times at the same time really played into that design. Yes. Um, we cook in the kitchen every night, but a lot of times it's just dinner. But on weekends, we both really get in there and cook, and, and um, so we will just be able to spread out all over the place and not be in each other's way, but still be together, and, and we're so excited. <laughs> well, you hang in there. It won't be long. We're already starting to install trim. The doors and case moldings go in first, followed by crown molding in the areas the cabinets won't be going. The cabinets arrive next and begin to cover up the walls and fill in the space. Now this is a big kitchen and there are a lot of cabinets to haul in and hang. A light stained finish really warms up the room and the space becomes much more defined as the cabinets go together. 
Now, everything has a place in this kitchen, and there's a place for everything. Barber's pre-planned storage really starts making sense when you look at all the storage available in these cabinets. And I know she'll be able to use the storage that's available in the two new island cabinets. This one over six foot, this one seven foot long. Now this one also has an overhang section. It'll be perfect for a little breakfast bar. I can already see the bar stools lining up there. Now our cooktop will be here. Over in this area will be our two double ovens and then our refrigerator over on this side. So the kitchen is laid out very well. It's well thought out and it's really coming together. Now another thing that's changed in the kitchen is the installation of our underlayment. Now this is a half inch cement board that will serve as the base for our ceramic tile that will be installed later. Now it's always a good idea on any underlayment to install it before you put in any cabinet so that you have a nice level flooring throughout your kitchen and breakfast area. Now the ceramic will be down before long. Countertops, appliances, hey we're almost through with this project. We'll show you a lot more details next. Now let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out this week's best new product. Brought to you by the Home Depot. Over the years, one thing I know for sure, if you have any metal on the outside of your home, sooner or later a little rust will start peeking through. Well, to get rid of that rust, generally you would have to wire brush, sand, clean, prime, and paint in order to make that rust go away and stay away for an extended period of time. Now there's a way to do it a little bit easier. This is Loctite Extend Rust Neutralizer. What it basically does is it will convert light rust to a paintable surface. Now it's very important anytime you have any kind of product like this that you read the instructions very carefully and on these instructions it shows you exactly how to take care of that rust. First of all, you'll want to get rid of any of the obvious rust that you may have just by using some sandpaper, a fairly coarse grit paper, around 50 grit. After that you wipe it down and shake the can very well and then apply several coats, very light coats, over all of the rust, waiting no more than 20 minutes in between each of the coats. After you've applied three thin coats, then you allow it to dry overnight. The next day, a little more light sanding with a 320 grit paper and you're ready to apply the final coat of paint. Now this is a black color and once you get finished with this, it looks so good you'll think, well hey, maybe I don't even need to paint it anymore, but this actually acts as a primer or a base for the top coat that you'll need to apply to really make it last. And you think about it, a can of this is only $5, that'll save you a lot of elbow grease. Welcome back to our kitchen renovation project. You know, at a certain point in a project like this, things really come together very quickly and it's gotten to the point here where the owners are actually moving back into their kitchen. Now since they were in their previous kitchen for over 15 years, they had a lot of things they had accumulated, so they're in the process of kind of looking at a few of the things and trying to decide on what they want to keep and what they may want to give away to the kids. But the last couple weeks, I've really been busy here. The kitchen really started to transform when the tile setters arrived and began covering the cement backer board with these 18 inch ceramic tiles. Soon after the grout was applied, cleaned and allowed to dry, the countertop installers arrived to set the granite countertops and backsplashes in place. While the granite is practically bulletproof, the cabinets and walls have to be protected from moisture, so the sinks, backsplashes and seams were thoroughly caulked and sealed. With the tops in place, things really started to take off. The final touches and additional cabinets went in and all of the appliances began to fill the various holes in the kitchen as the plumbers and electricians make all the connections to ensure that everything works as it should. Everything in this kitchen is brand new with a couple exceptions. The refrigerator and the dishwasher were purchased a couple years ago and the homeowner decided to go ahead and reuse those and then they bought a few other things they needed like the double oven with the top being a convection microwave and then they have the cooktop here that's in, located in the second island that we have. And of course, all of the plumbing fixtures and sinks are all brand new. Now these are really popular, the prep sinks, and this particular one having the, the pull-out sprayer makes it very convenient to where you can change the flow of the water just with a click of the button. Another thing that's nice here is the air switch for the garbage disposal. Instead of an electrical switch, you simply push that, turns the garbage disposal on, 
you push it off in order to turn it off. It's a lot safer than having an electrical switch in a wet area like this. And when you have an island, there's not a place, a convenient place, for the switch to go anyway. And the double bowl sink there that's located in front of the window also is a companion type faucet to the one we have here on the prep sink. Now as far as the cabinets, the homeowners and the cabinet man really worked closely together to utilize every bit of space they had. Now this little pantry cabinet had to be positioned and fit in a space that only had about 8 or 10 inches from the wall to the door trim. But as you can see, there's plenty of space for a lot of canned goods and everything is very visible, very accessible. A lot of times pantries get a little too deep and things kind of get lost in the back of the pantry. Here's another great idea. Anytime you can put a little tilt out in front of a sink or a cooktop, it gives you a little more storage space there. And of course, the Lazy Susan that we have in the base cabinet really allows you access to an area that many times is just forgotten about. And the appliance garage also allows you to kind of tuck things away out of view. Now the homeowners told me that they love to watch television, listen to music while they're preparing meals. So the cabinet maker created kind of a unique entertainment center for them over on this side of the room. That way the television that's on a swivel can swivel to the kitchen or to the breakfast area and we have a series of tilt outs for some of the audio video equipment that they have along here. So that's really worked out nice and kind of neat how it's kind of tucked away. Now we're going to give the homeowners a little bit of time to kind of get settled in and then we'll come back and see how they like their new kitchen. Let's head outside for Around the Yard with Danny and lawn and garden expert Tricia Craven Worley. Brought to you by Timber Tech Composite Decking. Less work, more life. This is a unique looking pot, Tricia, with all the holes in it. <laughs> and you probably thought it was defective, right? I wasn't sure what to think of this one. <laughs> well, Danny, this is a strawberry pot and it's constructed specifically for strawberries. It helps keep uh, all the little plants off the ground because, you know, there are a lot of creepy crawlies like sow bugs and, and snails just love to eat the strawberry crop. And also because it's a vine, this is a very attractive way for it to grow outside of the pot. And I guess the plastic pipes to hold the umbrella, huh? <laughs> yeah, so the strawberries don't burn. <laughs> well, actually, this PVC pipe is part of the whole system that I created to try to give these strawberries their best shot at growing. I started by putting a piece of mesh over the hole at the bottom because you always want to protect the soil from coming out. I stuck this PVC pipe in here and then I started putting a combination of potting soil and amendment all around it because you know anything in a container is totally dependent on what we give it. I see. Okay. And then um, as far as inside there, it looks like you have what? Some kind of gravel. Well, I do. I put in a horticultural gravel instead of uh, plain gravel because plain gravel, as you may know, it's just for construction. Horticultural gravel doesn't have any of the salts and some of the other stuff that we really don't want going into our soil. I see. In effect, I've created a vertical French drain. Okay. Let's see if it comes out here. Oh, I see. You're able to take it out and then the gravel just settles right. Okay. Yeah, see hey, that? Yeah, that's great. So basically, watering here will allow all of the plants to get equal water instead of the ones on top getting all the water. Absolutely. That's exactly what we're trying to do. When we water this uh, this pot, the water is going to go through and percolate through the French drain equally into all of the plants. I can't wait for those nice strawberries. Oh, me too. What a great breakfast room with a fireplace, bookcases, plenty of windows. I'm back with homeowner Barbara Huff who's just endured several weeks of intense kitchen remodeling. Now you've been back in the kitchen for a couple weeks. Uh, how you like it? We love it, Danny. We love it. Well, you did a lot of planning, a lot of thinking through all of the kitchen design, which is very important. What are some of the things that have worked out for you since you've been in here for a couple of weeks? Well, for instance, this corner, I stood here and prepared Mama's famous asparagus casserole, and everything was right where I needed it. I didn't move. Sometimes Jerry and I were on two different sinks not in each other's way. Now, it was wonderful. In the old kitchen, uh, kind of tight in there, kind of dancing a little bit. Yes, there was a lot of, honey, could I get under here? Would you move? Whatever. Well, it's been a real pleasure working with you on this. You thought out everything, and I'm glad it worked out so well, and I hope you enjoyed seeing this kitchen transformation. I'm Danny Lippert. Hope to see you next week. If you are thinking about adding on to your home, you just have to join us next week.
Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.